and welcome to the next episode of Prism Inside the Creative Mind. My name is Tanya Fraser. I am an oboe player, chamber musician and the artistic director of Southern Cross Soloists. And today I've got a very interesting guest, uh, a colleague and a friend, um, a music colleague and a friend who actually has had the most interesting career and has done pretty much the equivalent of code hopping in sport with the arts. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to Tom Coyle. I'd normally introduce Tom as the bass trombonist of the Queensland Symphony Orchestra, which was your job for... 30 years. 30 years, wow. Um, and you've now changed your entire career. Yes, yes, I left. So, uh, I stopped working with the orchestra four years ago and um, didn't really know what I was doing at that point, but mm -hmm. um, wanted to do some acting and did a little, and then a little became a lot, and now I'm just full-time acting and having the time of my life. That's, that's just incredible, because most people are lucky to have one career in their life, but um, you've had more than that, actually. If we were to go right back, um, you were actually um, a mathematician and a computer programmer. Yes, <laughs> which was, ironically, the most fun I ever had um, doing my degree. Um, so yeah, I did an environmental science degree, um, which was with a major in mathematical modeling of environmental systems. So things mm, like climate like change, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and um, and things like um, epidemiology of you know spread of diseases and things. It was oh. and it was absolutely brilliant. It was so much fun. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. Um, and I did a lot of computer programming in that. But after I finished my degree, it was in the middle of the first big dot com boom. And the money for computer programmers was enormous. Mm. And so I got sucked into that and I took a job as a computer programmer doing uh, commercial programming, mm -hmm. which was so boring. Ah, uh, so that was... <laughs> and that yeah. was what drove me back to back music. Back to music, yes. yeah. Because, I mean, music's a bit like sport. If you leave school and you don't go straight into training, mm. it's very hard to, let's say, four years later, mm. go back and try to keep going because, you, you know, you've got to be training when you're young and physically able to, um, you know, commit that time and mm. uh, things to it. So how was that going back yeah. after spending all that time as um, a computer programmer. It was scary. Um, fortunately, I kept playing, yeah. right? well, through, through most of it. Um, so I paid my way through uni by playing for Queensland Theatre Orchestra and Queensland Philharmonic, mostly doing operas and ballets mm -hmm. and, and musicals. Mm -hmm. um, but after four years of doing that and not practising, <laughs> um, my standards had started to drop. So mm. um, the last year... Um, I wasn't getting any work and I pretty much wasn't playing. Mm. Um, but um, it was the most ridiculous chance that yes. led me back to music. So I was working in North Sydney, yeah. um, programming for NCR, the guys who make all the um, ATM machines, mm -hmm. and walked downstairs in my lunch break and bumped into a friend that I had gone to school with in grade seven mm -hmm. at the Sydney Con High who happened to be running AYO at the time. Ah. And he said, do you still play trumpet? And I said, no, I play trombone now, which wasn't quite true because yeah. I had Not pretty practiced. much stopped yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> for at least a year. And he said, that's brilliant. We need a principal trombone for AYO tomorrow. Oh, wow. And I said, good. And I said, wait there. And I went upstairs and resigned from my job and, and um, went, to AYO. And went and did, AYO, did a season of AYO. And um, that was what got me back into music and because yeah. I had the most brilliant time yeah and but then of course like you say going back into that after after not having done it seriously for for a few years um i had no idea what was going to actually happen no um so it you was just very much just dive in and and hope and, there's water gave, in the pool yeah gave, gave it a go yeah. because these days it's so hard i mean i always knew what i wanted to do mm -hmm. um i went through school wanting to leave earlier so that i could get mm -hmm. on to my career yeah. um but these days i feel like it's, there's just so many options and deciding to do the arts seems like deciding you're going to win the lotto or something. It's <laughs> Absolutely. like, really? Are Absolutely, you seriously? Yeah. And, and most kids would think mm, it's better to go and do a, a safe degree yeah. or something than yeah. to take that chance. Yeah, well, I was always, I mean, I was really glad that I had the science degree behind me because mm. if, it, if it failed, I had something to go, if the music failed, I had yeah. something to go back to. Exactly, um, yeah. I was determined that it wouldn't. Yes, yeah. Um, and, you know, did everything that I could possibly, you know, yeah. muster to make it success. But um, Do you think because you'd gone out of it, um, you it mattered more and you practised yeah. much more focus than yeah. the kids at the, who were at university? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. It yeah. was, yeah, I remember being shocked at 
how little people were working yes. um, and practicing. Yeah, so you're um, not taking it for granted. No, basically. no, not by any means. And, you know, I mean, by then I was 26, I guess. So, um, you know, it was Quite a late, a late in start the world in, of in that sense. Yeah. Music. Um, and yeah, the pressure yeah. was on to sort of, you know, get my, get my standards up and get yeah. a job and, and um, you know. Yeah, and then and you and then you won the position in the Cure. Yes, which was again um, just ridiculously lucky. Because mm. um, once I went back to music, I went to the con and did my uh, postgrad diploma mm-hmm. in music uh, in performance. And at the end of that year, I got a phone call. I was playing tenor trombone, and uh, never considered playing bass, and never had played bass. Mm. And then I got a phone call from QSO, and um, the phone call it was at nine, ten to ten on a Thursday morning and I got a phone call from the orchestra manager saying, do you play bass trombone? Mm-hmm. And I said, no. <laughs> and they yeah. said, do you own one? Yes. I said, no. Can you borrow one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, QIO's got one. And they said, good, can you come and play Marla 2 in 10 minutes? Oh, wow. And yeah. um, that was my first time playing bass trombone. Yeah. And it was just the perfect fit. Yeah. Um, I was doing well on tenor, yes. but bass was just a perfect yeah. fit. And it, again, it was just ridiculous luck. Yeah. They just, just had someone pull out at the last minute and they needed someone. And I did, yeah, I did the four days or whatever, three, four days of that. And then they gave me a year's contract. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. After which um, they offered me another year's contract, yeah, yeah. Um, which was the point where I said, no, I want okay. to learn how to play this instrument. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, then and went off to, to, study, to and then... study in England and a little bit in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, and um, <laughs> then I was, I was on trial with Scottish National. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my... The only audition I did yeah, while yeah, I was yeah. over there, and I would have given anything to get in to, that to job. get that job. Yeah. But while I was there, um, the QSO position came, came up, up, and I sent a tape. And then two days before the audition, I panicked, uh-huh. and I said, "I the odds of getting it from a tape were just not good not, enough." Yeah, and jumped on a plane oh, and, and and went and to the actual flew audition. home and did the audition live. Yeah, just to yeah. you know to maximise my chances because you know the job coming up at home, you just. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you play the violin, there's, you know, yes. 20 jobs in each yes. orchestra and it just gets worse depending. I mean, cello is so much harder. Mm-hmm. But when you come down to, I think the worst has got to be tuba. Right. Or harp. Like, yes. there's one job in yeah. each orchestra. Yeah. And I know there's like one harp job comes up every 20 years. Yeah, well, well my job, I held it for 30 years. Yes, and exactly. all my students yeah. over all those years have been yeah, waiting for, the, you know, right. for me to go away. Yeah, ab- absolutely. <laughs> I'm very happy when I did. And I think we were also obsessed with going overseas yeah. to sort of bring up, you know, experience that um, really European artistic mm. environment. Mm. But I think now things have changed back in Australia, and yeah. I think a lot of us have realised it's actually the best place to, yeah. to live. Yeah. And also being in Europe, um, you know, you're always considered a bit of a foreigner. Mm. Um, yeah, true. So um, yeah, so yeah. It's, I think it's getting more and more that people are wanting to come back and yeah. get the lifestyle well, and, and the quality. The quality of the orchestras here. Yeah. Have, you know, the transformation oh, in the, in those yeah. thirty years is exactly. Just, there's just no. Um, they're just not. Of the same species. No. It's just that the quality of people that are coming in yeah, and, and the quality of work that's being done. Yeah. Um, you work harder. It yes. was When I first got that job, it was a really easy job. Okay. It was, we worked so little. I had, I used to count it, I had 16 weeks a year off on full pay. <laughs> and in those pay, in those paid weeks off, you would go and work with Sydney or Melbourne oh, or, yes, or yes. Adelaide. I, well, I had three months playing the ring cycle with the Adelaide Simph. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the freedom to just go anywhere and at yeah. any time was you you were supported brilliantly. Yeah. Which was it was a wonderful, easy life. Now it's a yeah. No, and then they started getting more commercial work. Yes, and exactly, yeah. And yeah. it's you know, it's uh, yeah, much higher quality performances. Yeah, but yeah. um but you work a lot more. The work lo- yeah, work yeah. a lot. Particularly more. I mean it depends, you know, I'm sure violinists always work that hard. Mm. <laughs> but um yeah, yeah. you know, um every time there was a Mozart program or a you know, something mm. smaller, a Baroque program, the trombonists got, got, yeah, got, got the time got off. Time and, off yeah. and, you know, you could also, you know, um, and people still do, of course, but it was very easy to go off and do your own projects, mm. you know, chamber music, whatever you wanted to do. Well, that's what I love about Brisbane as mm. opposed to even other places in Australia, let alone in Europe. I think you've got that freedom here that people are open to experimenting and, you know, you can sort of... If you, mm. if you want to do something, you can actually go and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's very easy. Who was to, I was talking to somebody the other day. Oh, and yeah, an actor friend who moved to Melbourne, 
and he just he lasted six months and came back mm-hmm. for that exact reason. Yeah. He said, here, you can just have a go and you do stuff and people will support you and it's it's really easy. And he found in Melbourne that it was much more difficult. Yeah, it and is. And it's a much more closed shop and, yeah. It's and a, oversaturated. And oversaturated, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that was interesting. So, no, def- definitely. I think people are interested in more some experimental things here yeah. as, as well. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, with the orchestra, you're talking about how hard you work. I mean, a lot of string players these days particular get a lot of um injuries Mm. um any instrument that's a bit crooked the flute string players i I don't know about saxophone players they're not in orchestras (laughs) but but um and so how did you what what was it like for you being there for 30 years yeah um i was injured permanently oh Um, really yeah yeah it's so nice not playing now because i the injuries are pretty much physical yeah 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 yeah. um so uh not very long in um maybe seven years in um i got uh, just from the static i mean you're holding however many kilos it is on on the bass drum and you're holding it off your little pinky and you're static for hours and hours Mm. and hours um and so it was it wasn't the move you know violinists you know and cellists always get the the elbow problems so much um but um yeah for the trombone it was the static it was the static position and so this all just crammed up and and um I had all kinds of um, degradation in my spine. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Wow. And so I was just in permanent pain uh-huh. um, and permanent physio for the whole, basically the whole time I was in the orchestra. Oh, really? Wow. Um, and every day I was doing a lot of work to, to just be able to keep turning up. Yes. Um, it was manageable, but it was it was mm. not fun. No. Um, and then eventually I had to buy a, a, a stand, stand to yeah. uh, to hold the instrument, which is the only way I got through the last 10 years. Wow. Um, and then, and that was wonderful. But it, it, as with so many things, you you then static, like it's static, and so you don't have the freedom, the physical yeah. freedom. Um, so that was annoying. But I got I got used to it. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, I, we tend to play standing up, and I think that mm, is so much better because even if you're static, you're yeah. you've got that yes. flexibility to move. But yeah. with an orchestra, if you're sitting on a chair six hours a day. Mm. Five, five or six days a week, yeah. then that's a huge yeah. um, amount of being I, in the one I, position. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I th- everyone's got injuries, mm. you know, of one sort or another. There's mm. uh, there's not many orchestral musicians not that don't, that, yeah, are not hurting. Yes, um, they might be, they might, if they might not call it an injury, but mm. you know, it's you know, when you're doing that for that many hours. Yeah, um, I found the ballet seasons the worst yeah. because something like Sleeping Beauty is a full three hour ballet, yeah. no, and hardly any breaks and mm. you'd often do two of those a day yep. um and then you'd be practicing beforehand mm-hmm. so um i think i've never had any injuries actually right. ever um but the only time i started going i hope this isn't going to be something was doing sleeping beauty right. where i started yeah. to get sort of a tingle down the onto my little right. finger oh, on my okay. left yeah, right. and i thought interesting i was like I knew people, I knew oboe players overseas who yep. had had to give up mm, and I was wow. a bit worried about that. But luckily, I it never turned into anything and my um, trainer helped me just work on upper back strength yep. and shoulder strength. Yes. And that, and that yeah. really, that the physios really, are amazing. Yeah. They, they get it. It's, yes. they, I, I remember when, I, well, when, I, when my injury first occurred, um, it was extreme and sudden and my, oh, this whole muscle down here just, just locked up and mm-hmm. I couldn't move at all. Wow. Just no movement of the head. And um, and I thought, oh, it'll go away, it'll go away. And then it didn't. And I went to the physio and they were amazing. Mm. They, they get you freed up. It was, oh, that's good. And yeah. then, but ultimately, I, mean, I had this chunk of muscle that never got freed up. And then ultimately, one physio did acupuncture. Uh-huh. Not the traditional sort, but just a needle straight into yeah. the actual knot. Yeah. And he found the spot. Oh, I love that. And, <laughs> and then the muscle literally just ripped apart yeah, in, yeah, a, yeah. in a moment. It oh, was wow. extreme pain, but... Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. I, actually, I think it's amazing. I'm always comparing music to sport. And I don't oh, know if anybody yeah. realises that once you're at our level, like from an um, artistic and intellectual perspective of mm. being able to read any type of music yeah. and, you know, know how to play it physically, mm-hmm. um, it, it's, it, it's really just a physical yeah. action that you have yeah. to perfect. And our job as we get older is just keeping in good physical condition. Mm. Uh, yeah. Really, yeah, so I that we can... Lot, yeah. You know, play the way yeah. you want to play. Mm, you have, um, yes, you, yeah. When you you need that that condition, so that you can be free enough to mm, yeah, yeah. to actually create the music you yes, want to create. Exactly, and yeah. that's the struggle I find. Yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. But so you left the orchestra four years ago, yep. and 
since then you have created an entirely new career in an art form that most people would think is even less of a likely thing <laughs> yeah, than true. being a musician. Yeah, well, I, I think mean, that's fair. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, the it's two much things, harder to make your living you, know, you can, supermodel, <laughs> ballerina, actor. Uh-huh. Those are the things, if, yeah. if your kid says, oh, those are what I want to be, you sort of go, yeah, uh, maybe Yeah, well, I, I, I did have the supermodel option, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, it's just, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, yes, so indeed. So how, how did that happen? How did you go from trombone to actor? Yeah, so... The motivation for leaving the orchestra was another injury, um, mm-hmm. my hearing. Yeah. Um, so sitting in the back of an orchestra, it's loud. Yes. Um, and we didn't know in the early days. And we practised in tiny rooms. And yeah. the noise levels were just obscene. Yeah. Um, like I being mean, in a disco yeah, all yeah, day yeah. Oh, worse than a disco. Yeah. Um, many, many, many times worse. Um, yeah. Which we found out later when we started measuring it. Um, the noise levels were, were just astounding. Um, I know doing... Which one was it? Shostakovich 10 or 11? Which is the really loud one? Probably both. They're all, um, they're all yeah. loud anyway, for the last I three pages. I <laughs> think it was 11. Anyway, one of those two. Um, and we had monitors next to our ears oh, and we yeah. were hitting 144 decibels, which is permanent irreversible hearing loss wow. after a 50th of a second. What's and disco? What level does a disco have? 120. 120 and you're at so 144. 44, and it's a doubling every three decibels. So you're talking hundreds of times louder than a disco. Mm. Um, anyway... So it was noisy, yeah, and we didn't know, and yeah. So my hearing started to suffer mm. um, for the last seventeen years in the orchestra. Wow. It was never a problem yeah. um, until it was, yeah. And then ultimately, um, it was just getting a bit tricky, and I was just not quite hearing things, and I was struggling to to really lock in. And of course, once we knew that we were getting the hearing the that we were getting. Um, that sort of level and we were suffering hearing loss we all then started protecting our hearing yes so when you've already got hearing loss and you're protecting your hearing it was getting pretty quiet in there sometimes yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway so that was my motivation for leaving it was mm-hmm. just you know everything I, I feel like my playing was at its peak mm. at the time and I was having a great time um, but I'd done everything I wanted to do yeah um, I ticked all my all my bucket lists mm. um, and so, yeah, so it was time to leave while I, while I still felt good well, about it. Yeah, well, that's what, I mean, there's so many musicians. We often feel like we only have one ability. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like someone like myself, you know, we I, I knew at school I wanted to be a musician. I studied music. We do music, 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 music. Mm-hmm. And suddenly you get sort of to the middle, your middle sort of life. And it's like, well, I don't have any other qualifications mm. and there's nothing else. I can do mm. but at the same time you don't want to be I mean many orchestras have people who sort of play till retirement mm. but it's nice to be able to sort of yeah. leave when you're on yeah. top yeah I was always I said when I started that I would make sure that I left while I was still playing what I I had to be happy with my playing yeah. I was never going to let it suffer exactly, um, yeah. and as, yeah and I felt it was going great mm. um, in fact it was getting easier yes um that's in those years, a bit yeah. like what you were saying about you, you, you find the form and everything's working. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, I was enjoying it enormously. But um, yeah, once the hearing was going, it's like yeah. it's just you know. That's right. um, talking about the injuries, I always had this stupid joke that the trombonist, unlike every other musician could play but you could lose your entire left arm <laughs> and your right arm from here down and you could still do the play. job but <laughs> hearing yeah. not so much no, that's... so anyway yeah so um so the motivation for the acting starts back in grade 10 at north Mead high oh, school in okay. western sydney yeah when the school was putting on a production of richard the mm-hmm. and i auditioned mm-hmm. and i got a role yeah as the trumpet player <laughs> And it has irked me all my life. Yes. I always wanted to be in the play. Yeah. Um, but you so were the herald. I, I was the herald. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, playing the alarms. Yes. Um, and all those years, it mm. had annoyed me. So um, once I left the orchestra and I was looking for things to do, I thought, well, I want to do some acting. So I just did some, some community theatre and yeah. did some lessons. And it was really fun. Yeah. And then I got some offers of some other things. And... Um, then I did lots and lots of lessons. Yes. And I did lots and lots and lots of lessons. So basically the last the last four years I've just been studying yeah. as as frantically as I could with everyone I could. Um, so was it confronting at first? Because musicians aren't very good at um, yeah. letting go. I yeah. mean, we have our instrument, we train, we don't have to put ourselves out mm. there in a vulnerable way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. that's what we're all a bit 
scared of. Right on the the nail, right on the head. Um, yeah, as a musician, you hide behind your instrument. It's it's the sound you're putting mm. out there. It's not it's not you. Mm. Um, although you know your identity and your and your self worth and all that gets tied up in it. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, it was. Um, and because that's a hundred percent of acting is you have to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, you have to expose yourself. And um, yeah, it was it was tough and it was challenging. Um, so how long? I mean, do you still find that a problem, or did you get over it in the first sort of year I, or so? No, it's always been tricky. I mean, the hardest thing with acting this is the, this is the challenge. When you play music, you hear it. Mm. When you're an actor, you don't know what you're doing. Mm. You can't see how it's selling out there, um, and so you you have to trust other people's feedback um, yeah. as as to whether it's working or not. That's why a director is just you know in the, I mean most of what I've done has been theatre work, a fair bit of film and TV, but um, but mostly theatre. Yeah, it's been the biggest stuff, and um, it's really hard when you just don't know if what you're doing is the right thing. Mm. Um, so that's been that's been the biggest challenge, mm. um, as far as getting used to putting myself out there. I just threw myself at it, mm. you know. It's just like whatever. Yeah. Um, um, I discovered, much to my surprise, that I was an introvert, not an extrovert. I'm a confident introvert. Yes. Yes. Um, I would always rather be the quiet guy in the back. Yeah, I um, think a lot of musicians might be like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And ballet dancers too. Okay. Because I mean, in the world of dance, you actually are not. You know, you don't talk. It's everyone's. It's a very structured mm. thing. Yes. So they're yes. often. Um, okay. They often leave the expression for the stage as well. Yeah. But in life, they would be quite introverted. Mm. That's I think. interesting. Yeah, I think that's yeah. very true. But exhibitionism is yes. what a lot of yeah. actors. <laughs> I imagine. Um, you know, some of the top. Hollywood actors are quite yeah, I, yeah. And I, I've only met one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's a story about him in a minute. Um, but um, yeah, but coming back to the um, getting used to it, um, it's the the just recently. I just just only three or four weeks ago finished a season of play Death and the Maiden by Ariel Dorfman, where I played a either he is or he isn't a serial rapist, torturer, killer. Um, <laughs> and one of my victims yes. has caught me and kidnapped yeah. me and she's turned the tables. Yeah. Um, so I'm on, hour, on, on, on stage for two, over two hours, half of it gagged and tied, being threatened with a gun oh and then God. desperately trying to save my life, yeah. my own life from her. Who She wants to kill me or, yeah. or worse. Yes. <laughs> she wants to yes. do to me the things that I did to her. Which des- you deserved. Yeah. Well, <laughs> except the, the point in the play is you never know if he did it or not uh... or if she's she's so thoroughly traumatised yes. that um, did she just pick someone to, to victimise, to... to help yeah. her own dealings with it oh, wow. um so you never know yes and that's that's the that's the the end of the play leaves yeah. the audience having to decide but um it was the most i'm um, so i'm in my underwear <laughs> and being tortured and and um and lying and conniving and manipulating and so that was the most vulnerable by many many miles that yeah. i've ever been on wow. stage yes um that was hard yeah and uh, night after night after night doing that it's it was such a relief when it, i mean it was Wonderful fun to do, but that I think after that I could do anything. anything. I yeah. could stand up any any time and do anything after doing that. Did it feel? How did I mean? I know when you've got a concert, you can sort of feel a bit sort of queasy all day until the concert. How yeah. did it? Did you have that same feeling? No, I don't get that with the acting. Um, the I mean, in this this was the most extreme thing I've done, as I say. Um, it stayed with me for hours afterwards. It mm. was um, I got warned, but Eugene Gilfeder had had done yes. the same role in oh, okay. Melbourne Theatre Company, Sydney Theatre Company, and um, my son was working with him, and he sent a message through my son and said that um, it would be grueling. Yeah, and I just kind of, eh, it's just acting. You're yes. pretending. Yeah, oh, he was so right. Yeah, um, it was. It was. It gets in you, yeah. and it was. It was difficult to walk away from that and I had to so that was a new skill I yes. hadn't I hadn't had to do that before no. to, to learn how to cleanse myself afterwards yeah um but now I think I've got a taste for it I want to do more oh really yeah more horrible uh, roles like oh, I really? get why yeah. they all want to do the villain it's yeah. um yeah it's oh it's so 
oh, you get to do all the things you never do. Yes. You could never, I mean, there's one of my line, all the things that they've always forbidden you forever. Everything your mother whispered you were never to do. Yes, <laughs> so yes. You get to do them yeah, as an actor. Yeah, yeah. Kind of fun. <laughs> no, yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> yes. I tell you another thing that I would find almost impossible is memorising all mm-hmm. of those lines. How, like, memorising a two-hour play. Yeah. Is that? It's well, just work. Yeah. It's just work. Um I, doing it for film and TV is hard because you don't have much turnaround time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, on the set, suddenly they rewrite a line and it's like, right, be there now and know this new line and forget the old one and yeah. and, and you've got to sell it. Yeah. Um, that's hard. But for the theatre, you've got, you've got months. Yes. Preparing it and, and you don't mess with the lines in the theatre. Well, I was going to ask you because I'm one of those people who would not remember it and then try to say it the way I'd say it and hope mm-hmm. that's good enough. Yeah. But- that doesn't. Oh, look, it, that's not good enough. <laughs> no, I mean it has to be right, but of course it always happens. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a, a wonderful couple of moments in the in this play where, um, well, for me occasionally I would put a line that was the second clause of a sentence into the first, and then you, from your mind just frantically, okay, how do I put the put the second Weave clause now in. as the first, yeah, and, yeah. or the other person it's a really key word and they've got to feed it to you and they feed you the wrong word which you know it's human yeah. that happens yeah. um and you're you're quickly rewriting your your responses yeah. to yeah. because you you know the next moment is, is that's right. desperately important that you say this thing yeah um so but the memorizing um yeah so that's human foibles um that happens mm. to anyone anytime but the memorizing yeah it, it's like music you know mm. you work you, yes yeah, so you, you, you put in the hours and even when i'm in the show um I run the show at home, before you uh, the whole show from start to finish, yeah. um, every day. Just so to... what you learn in music has you pretty much just use that, mm. um, yeah, for preparing in the yeah yeah absolutely it's um it's I mean I, I think the biggest difference is and this has taken me um, some time to to get my head around and and also as I go to different teachers and mm. you know everyone teaches basically Stanislavski style mm-hmm. method acting of some of some variety um, but um, to learn the meaning first and then you fit the words then the, the actual specific words go to the meaning um, then it gets quite easy okay um, it's a bit like I guess like a musical phrase you know yeah you um, you don't really learn each individual note when you're memorizing a piece you you yeah, know the right. contour, yeah. Um, and if you had to stop and and say to somebody, it's a B flat followed by an A followed yeah. by a minimum G. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, what is it? But if you, da, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, then so it's it's, it's just, a lot like that, and yeah. that that's taken me some time to to realise that it's it's many times better if you yeah if you 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 memorise the meaning and add the words to that, mm. um, and then if you do get it wrong, yes, you you're still going to carry the meaning. Yeah, and it's the meaning that, that's more important. Yeah, and so you have private lessons. You don't mm. go. Do you go to do classes yeah. with lots of Every, people yeah. or just uh, one on one? Both. Okay. Um, so I started with um, NIDA do short yeah. courses, and they were amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, just wonderful, intense, short, intense courses with maybe eight or ten people, um, and amazing teachers. So yeah, started with them. Um, and then, you know, the various theatres, you know, occasionally do workshops and or courses. Um, so I did a lot with Le White, mm-hmm. which was really good. Um, I did a year as an apprentice with Quinton Shakespeare Ensemble, which mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. fantastic. So yeah. that was, that was, that's really intense, really high quality training. And yeah. they really know what they're doing there. Yeah. And then that was where I did all the Linklater voice work, which was fundamentally important. Um, yes. um because my voice, I had all kinds of issues with my voice that I didn't know about. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for yeah. acting, for normal yeah, life, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no, but, no, no but one when you're gonna, Well, and, and, again, with this show, when it was so intense, yeah. um, the next morning, after, even after doing all my, all my proper voice work, um, I could barely speak the really? next day. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, because yeah, it was, yeah, lots of screaming and shouting and, and, yeah. and tension, and you're trying to keep tension out of your throat, but you've got to keep it in your emotions. But, um, but then, yes, um, individual... Um, private lessons are invaluable because um, mm. you get that one-on-one. Actors don't do it anywhere near like musicians well, do. Well, see, that's it's what I, so I, was, common. I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they'll do it for a role. Yes. Um, to, you know, um, and you know, the to big prepare films, for a specific The big films role, will yeah. hire a, yeah. a, an acting coach to work with the big actors, mm-hmm. um, and they spend months working on their role. But yeah, it's not. It's nowhere near as common, and um, I think it's really, really good mm. to get that one-on-one. Yeah. Um, it's just it's a you know obviously you know for acting the 
the, the important thing is how you're interacting yeah. with other actors. So you want other people in the room with you for the most part. Yes. Um, but even then, having other actors with you and doing private lessons, I think is, yeah, it's, it's just interesting how yeah. different traditions appear. And actors don't practice like musicians do. <laughs> They, you know, if they're doing an hour a day, they, they're thinking they're doing great work. Yes. Um, you know, it really shocks me. Yeah. Like, you know, I work, I work all day, every day. Yeah. Um, whether there's a show on or not, I'm just always working because yeah. that's, that's our tradition. That's yes, our world. Yes, exactly. And it's like, why wouldn't you? Because you're going to get better. Yeah. I, well, I feel like we could learn, we, each yeah. side could learn from others because yeah. I've, when I haven't, I'm not teaching any um, university students at the moment, but I really... It was so hard for me to get them to come out of their shell, mm-hmm. and um, I feel like it would be so beneficial for uh, serious music students to have acting lessons mm. and to be put in that vulnerable position because it would help their yeah. performance mm. so much. Yeah. And this sort of getting away from just playing perfect notes, mm. and because the the hardest thing as a musician is to get that um, emotion or that story over to the audience mm. um, but a lot of the time students get bogged down with the trees and not the yes. you know not the forest yeah. um, so true. I think there's a really big void there of um, giving drama or acting mm. lessons to music students yeah. but yeah. it sounds like just the um, <laughs> the actors need a little bit of fun. yeah I think it could go both ways but it's really interesting because that's one of the things that I've learned through the acting is that exact thing that the detail doesn't matter. You know, I know, you know, in the orchestra, we, you know, you do a, a big Mahler symphony or something and you just crack one note and you'd just be devastated. Yeah. You think you've destroyed the performance <laughs> yes, yes. and it's all you think about. Yeah, yeah. Um, the audience don't even know, for one no, thing. No. <laughs> um, and even if they did, they don't care. Yeah. And because acting is so much more imperfect than music, yes. you can't, you're not, perfection is just not even a thing. Um, so it's a thing that I've had to learn um, that, yeah, it's it's the bigger picture, which is which is what matters, and mm. I wish I had known that more in music. Yeah, um, exactly. Because yeah, you you do you just bog down on each yes the perfection of each note, and um, my fav I'm, I'm, I won't use names because I offended him once, but my favourite trombonist um, performer uh, was a, a wonderful example of this. Mm. He played with so much passion and so much excitement and he would crack things mm. and they would be imperfect mm. and nobody cared because it was it was just you walked away exhilarated. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he exactly. and he didn't he didn't find the boundary and stop. He found the boundary and went kept, went kept multiple steps over it. And you just you didn't yeah. hear those things. You, you heard them but you didn't care because you you know that's right so it's like he was a great a great example of that we've had similar um, i remember at one of the um, bangalore music festivals that mm-hmm. i am the artistic director of one of our guest cellists broke a string in a performance and had to go off change it and come mm-hmm. back yeah. and all the audience could talk about was how absolutely thrilling it was to see that mm-hmm. right. they thought it was the right. best thing that, that, that it was like their favorite moment yeah. to see sort of they want to see who, the humanity that, yeah it's they like want to normal. see the humanity they yeah. want to see what really is people are really like and uh, they like the realism mm. of it they, yeah. they didn't and so he started again and played the piece again you know right. but they loved oh, wow. the string break yeah isn't that funny <laughs> that's funny i love that i had i you know in my um high school years i played cello as well as trombone and trumpet in those days. Um, and in the recent Romeo and Juliet production with Shakespeare Ensemble, um, they always have a band. Yes. Um, I got to play cello again because oh, I, right. I can't play trombone anymore. No, um, you are, okay. Along with my, along with my hearing loss, I have yeah. hyperacusis, which means normal level volume is unbearably painful for me. Oh. So I can just never be in, in loud noises. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, and, yeah I, I've so made, you won't do Rocky Horror? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I've tried to play trombone. It's just instantly painful, just straight okay. away. So, so I was that's going to ask you that. Yeah. So you play the cello. Now. So yeah, well, so yeah, so I, I well, I, in this in this performance, um, I was so the band plays all the way through the show, right? So when you if you're not on stage acting, you're in the band. It's a, yeah. it's really cool and really fun. But I, yeah, I played cello and um, a lot of electric bass, mostly mm-hmm. electric bass, but bit, and a bit of cello. And I also played electric guitar. Which was really fun because I don't play electric guitar. Oh. <laughs> and um, there was just one fight scene where they needed this this raunchy distort, distorted guitar, oh. and they just said, "Oh yeah, Tom can do that." And I said, "Yep." <laughs> 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 no idea what was going to happen, oh but it was God. really fun. Did, you, like, did you get a quick guitar lesson? 
No, I just, I just sort of, I said, "What do you want me to play?" And then I came home and mm, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I never, I never quite got the touch, but, um, but since it was supposed, to, it was yeah. as I think it was you as Mercutio was you dying. You faked it well. I faked it very well. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Which is like we were saying about it doesn't have to be perfect. No, as exactly. As long as you carry the meaning. Exactly. So that was really fun. But yeah. the reason I remember it is because um, on the last performance, my one of my cello strings broke. Ah. And. Um, Yes, my cello skills were not, and I had to keep playing. There was no, well, there was one one um, section of the cello solo, oh. and um, my cello skills were not sufficiently resurrected to be able to switch strings. And oh yeah, 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 play like elsewhere. they do, yeah, so play the whole was, thing um, on one string. Yeah, yes. so all of a sudden that became an electric bass solo. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were playing the cello. You practice? Do you practice? I don't. No, no. I don't own one. I just no. did it for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm tossing it up. Yeah. Um. Because I'm. I. I. I've gone back to playing a bit of piano, which is okay, really fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really enjoying that. But but I'm tossing up something. Yeah. I can't not do music. Yeah. Um, oh, that's yeah. That yeah, was so probably I'm, one of my questions. Is yeah. How do you? The. Okay. So here's the wonderful thing about that. Going not doing music for a job. I listen to music all the time. Oh now. yeah, yeah. All the time. I had you know I did in the early in the early days of yeah. course. Yeah. Um. Fanatically and for enjoyment as well as for study. Um, but then over the years in the orchestra, it just faded I, yeah. away. Yeah, I know that. And, I mean, I used to, if I've got a rehearsal, I go home and I don't put the radio on in mm. the car. I'll just have silence of enough music for the day. Thank you. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, yeah. But I think it was also my hearing loss oh. too. I, I ceased to engage with music. I'd yeah. listen to it. And I think my cognitive, uh, when you have severe hearing loss, um, your auditory um, part of your brain colonizes your cognitive part. Uh-huh. Um, and so, Basically, um, for my brain to decode the music I was listening to, um, was just taking so much work that there was no direct connection. Mm. Um, anyway, since I and since I've got these hearing aids, which are just magnificent. Yeah. So I didn't even realise you had. Yeah, they're had just one. so it's wonderfully like in, discreet. Invisible. Yeah. Um, oh. But all of a sudden, I can. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't I can't remember what it was. It was a might have been a Schubert symphony, uh, Schubert Great Symphony or something. Anyway, um, I was listening to it just the other day, and it was suddenly. Oh, is that what the violins are playing there? I've never heard that before <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I can yeah. suddenly hear again yeah, exactly. after all these years in, in those frequencies. Um, but yes, but so, yeah, I listen to music. I mean, it's partly because it's not my job, so it's yeah. just a joy. Um, but it's also, I think, because I can I can listen to it and hear it, which, yeah. is, which is just such a relief. Yeah. That's more important than, than... I was very sad. I mean, to put it mildly, when I left the orchestra. Yeah. It was devastating. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, was, yeah. yeah, I couldn't talk about it. No, um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, you know, people would ask and just, yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. Um, now I'm just so glad I did because I'm having yeah. so much fun. Yeah, well, that's, so you um, put it, all that, that, you know, artistic, you know, energy. Yeah, yeah. Into, into yeah. another and career. And of course, you know, the whole thing with orchestras versus chamber music and different oh, yeah, styles yeah. of music, you know, the, the limited uh, scope for creativity in the orchestra, mm. you know, of course... You, you, it's imperative that you're being creative and doing all the things you have to do. But it, you know, you're in a certain, yeah, a certain yeah. size box. You're just a cog. In um, yeah. A bigger... And so, um, again, the acting, it's just like it's yeah. just this world of creativity exactly. opens. And you yeah. know, and <laughs> I feel sorry for my my colleagues in, that I perform with. I don't do two performances the same. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so with you know, um, so my character in this recent play. He has to know whether he did it or not. The audience is not to know. Um, some nights I, you my character did it, did it yes. and some nights he didn't. Ah. And so and so there was nothing big in the in the outcome that that um, that was going to affect the other actors because you know obviously you've got to be um, considerate. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They, you can't just suddenly be doing something totally different. No. But there were just the nuanced differences. Yeah. And um, I just love doing that. I love that, that yes. explore. <laughs> Um, but every now and then they'd say, oh, you did it again, didn't you? What were you doing tonight? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel a little sorry for them. Yes. But, yes, but they were you know, wonderful actors. Oh, so get used to it. I mean, that's a bit like chamber music, isn't it? Yes. To re- react to, Precisely. to yeah. everybody around yeah. you. And if you're, doing, if you're doing the same work multiple times over mm. a series, um, it's going to be different every that's time. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it, yeah, it keeps it alive. Absolutely. So, it's, it's so, so what's your plans for 2022? Um, lots of plays, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got a, a handful of offers um, mm-hmm. and negotiating how to fit them in. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, it's still a fraught year, so we don't know what's, no, what will or won't come, but presuming, you know, presuming it all comes. So I've been doing a lot of work with at Astro Theatre, mm-hmm. um, 
And that's Which at AstraZeneca, it's in the uh, Valley? In the Valley, yeah. Yes. Wonderful little theatre. Yeah. Um, really doing really nice things. So mm-hmm. in, just an independent theatre, proper chair. Um, but really, really um, punching above their weight and getting mm. some getting some great shows happening. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'll be looking at their program for next year um, yeah. and seeing what, what is on offer there yeah. to audition for. I mean, that's, it's, it's a beautiful, again, the orchestra versus, uh, I remember before getting in the orchestra, freelancing was just so much fun. Because yes. one, you got to choose, yeah. and two, you never knew what was coming up, and That's so right. it's it's very similar with the acting. Um, yeah. I love that I have to audition. Yeah, um, I was just doing an audition for a for a TV show this morning, um, and you know the odds of getting them are so slim, but um, but it's just a joy to you yes. know to be part of that world. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there'll be lots of auditioning um, for both film and yeah. TV and for theatre. Yeah. Um, Is there a lot more? Um, film and TV work now here in mm. Queensland because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. It um, in in that that period where we were one of the you know the one of the only places without it. Yes. Um, all the all the international productions were coming. All the big the big productions. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, there was just no one's. I don't think anyone's worked as much. No, it's um, well, it's just so fantastic yeah. because I know. Oh, even five years ago, talking to makeup artists. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever we had our yearly photo shoot and it would be like, ah, there's no work at the moment in Queensland. It's all happening in Sydney. And, um, so to have that totally change, Mm. I mean that there's, you know, a bit of a silver lining there and and I hope it can continue. I think, I mean, I know that there's 35 major productions back to back, just, just waiting to get into the studios in Queen, in Southeast Queensland. Um, because, you know, with the, the studios that, Warner Brothers and then and then um, the Hammond, the new Hammond yeah. Studios have just announced another studio up in North Queensland. Have they? Um, yeah, okay. yeah. So that's about to get to get under construction. Um, there's another one at the Gold Coast. I can't remember the name of it, but um, where various productions, Portable yeah. Door, and some other productions yes, were right, happening. Yes. And then um, there's at least one or two studios going to be constructed in around Byron, Ballina kind yes, of region. Yeah. So it's just it's that's just exciting. exploding. And of course, once the big productions come. They find that working in Australia is really pleasant, and particularly Queensland. Exactly. I mean, so you get hot in summer. Yeah. But other than that, it's just twenty-four degrees and sunny, so yeah, they can exactly. shoot all the time. It, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's going real, and yeah, and of course the the skill levels of the of the crew and and um, the you know the non actor yeah. side of things is, well, there's more is work just for increasing, them as well. increasing, and and yeah, they're getting more work and more experience. So yeah. Yeah. It's going no, really that well. that's fantastic. I mean, you can see how well New Zealand did mm. um, out of yeah, all the shows that exactly. were all the yeah. major movies that were filmed there. Mm. So. And it, and it's similar in the independent theatre scene in Brisbane. It's just exploding. Mm. It's just more and more and more companies. They've this this time where um, where you couldn't go out and do work elsewhere. Everyone's just building their own work here um so ad astra as i said has has is developing mm. by leaps and bounds another company i work for curators is just doing wonderful work and they've got their first they're, they're a fairly new company a couple of years old mm. um and they're doing i mean they do magnificent work but they've they've launched their first full season for next year mm-hmm. um matrix theater which is a spectacularly high quality independent company um have relaunched again it's helen howard and michael Futcher. Okay, um wow. yeah they're yeah, they're you know, wonderful. Um, so they've relaunched their company, um, and then I'm just getting feeds from on Facebook of other companies. There's Apartment Thirteen Productions, which are the the first acting graduates from the Conservatorium came out at the end of last year, and a group of them have already formed their own production company. Wow. Done three shows already this year, and Incredible. they're launching next year. They're off and they're off touring next year. That's um, it's just company after company after company. There's just there's yeah. just and the uh, for me the independent theatre is where it's at yeah. both as an audience member as well as an actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love tiny theatres. I love being yes. right on top of the the yeah. audience or the actors. Yeah. Um, it's just so intimate. Yes. Um, yeah. so it's it's, really cool. it sounds really exciting. Yes. Actually. It is. Um, it's and you know Brisbane or well, at the Gold Coast, the southeast Queensland yeah. is yes. where you know the greatest population growth in the whole country. I think mm. from what I've heard. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so hopefully. Um, yeah, this hopefully all these acting companies will be supported financially, and it's that's mostly the, not. That's, yeah. Mostly not. There's there's some small support, but um, most of them are just. It's just about doing the work. It's about yeah. the love of the work. It's you know, yeah, as as like, we were when we were younger. You know, you, yeah. you start out just because you want to do the music. That's right. You know, and you you're doing your orchestral work or whatever else, but you want that you want that creative outlet that that's freer and exactly and, yeah. Um, 
so yeah i mean ultimately the the skill levels of the people doing all these productions will increase and and you know some of those companies will become um bigger and mm. more successful yeah um absolutely. but it's just this it's just the quality of work and the amount of work and the amount of pr- the number of productions that's available for audiences mm. is, is yeah. wonderful it's really, yeah it's no really it cool. sounds fantastic well i know you can't quite tell us what you've got planned for next year because you know still negotiating still it. negotiating yeah. contracts and things like that yeah. but um we'll put that up on the website fantastic um Thank once you. once you can do yeah. that and, okay um, brilliant yeah we'll look forward to seeing you doing some more exciting roles in 2022 maybe a few more villains yes hopefully hopefully yeah, i've got villain. some i've got some really nasty ones up my sleeve oh, which really? I'm, yeah so I'm, <laughs> i um yes i might put on my they're so nasty that i think i'll have to produce them myself oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think any company would want it but there's some really nice roles out there yeah so, oh cool yeah yeah, yeah. you so have to get in a marvel movie and be yeah, yes well yes yeah. <laughs> well my my son declan of course is an actor and um Yes, that was his great complaint was that I got into God as a, just as an extra, but in Godzilla vs Kong before oh. he got into one of those movies. <laughs> so that was a like. So we can I see you in one. Godzilla vs Kong. Well, I, I ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that a, yes, but that's life. Yeah, no, no. Well, look, Tom, thank you so much. It's been so fascinating to talk to you about your career and um, oh your multiple careers, um, and it's just so inspiring to see that you know you. People are not locked into one career and, mm. um, yeah, to see someone succeed in, in the arts in so many different ways, it's um, yeah. fantastic. Thank you. So, Lovely um, talking to you. Yeah. It's been fun. Oh, well, yeah. Well, good luck with everything. Yeah, and, um, and hopefully we'll catch up another time and see how things are going. Great. Thanks. Excellent. Okay. Cheers.